Toastmaster, our fellow Toastmaster, our honored guest. It's a dark and stormy night is the first part of a famous book. And for a rental car customer, it's the end of a long flight, it's a cold and stormy night, and you find yourself at a rental car counter. I've done that many, many, many times. A lot of times around business, and so I dealt with it my rental car was under contract with the business. So everything was sort of set. We took, we took all the free stuff and declined everything else. Now I'm in a different situation when I'm retired because I have to do it all myself. But I've rented cars in the US and I've rented cars internationally. And internationally was quite interesting. I remember one time in Germany, I rented a car from an outfit called Auto Rental. O T T O R E N T L. Auto Rental. Very, very popular with English speaking people, but everybody there knows that uh, car rental is a fox like the Benito. But all the Americans rented from Auto Rental. And so the other thing is I sort of avoid renting cars in left, left lane driving countries. <laughs> There's a, a reason for that. I keep telling them that, that they really should, I haven't made any progress with this, but they really should drive on the correct side, which is the right side. <laughs> but Rick Steves, famous travel guru, asked, he told us, uh, I, he said one thing one day, he says, don't rent a car in London. And uh, I was in London earlier this year, and I know now why. He says, rent it in Bath, and get a little bit used to it. Drive it around England for as long as you're there. Drop it in York and take the train back into London. That will increase the probability that you will make it through your first day. <laughs> So, what I, how do you rent a car in the current environment? It's a little different than I did because there's a lot of tools out there. You can rent, the uh, first thing you have to do is to choose, is to figure out what kind of car and size car you want, how long you're going to have it, but uh, remember that a standard, well, a full-size car, I never think of a Camry as a full-size car. I'm thinking more of a Crown Vic, but the Camry is a full-size car to a rental company. And what they, and so be a little aware of that, but know what kind of car that you would like to have and how long you would like to have it. And then go on Expedia or some other site and pull up the rental cars and look at them and uh, free advertisements, I like Dollar, Budget, or Alamo, have good success recently with those. And so you pull it up and you see how they're all compared one with another. And there's a big number there, which is typically the cost for a weekly rental. Okay, And you can look down there and say, oh, great, this is the lowest price. Well, beware, because look at it really closely because all of the fees and everything and additives are listed in the small print. And so the weekly cost is a little bitty thing down in the corner. And that's going to be, so that gives you the, the real information that you want to have to get your car. And then be a little bit aware also that unless you need a 15 passenger van, absolutely make your reservation, but don't pay for it because there might be a charge if you cancel. They will reserve it and keep it for you, but if you can't be canceled, then they'll. So there's your preparation. You've got your reservation. You go to the airport, and you arrive at the airport, and most times now, the airport rental is off-site in a rental car facility. Looks like an airport almost, but it's a rental car facility a long ways away. You go out and grab the bus, and away you go off to the rental car facility, and you rent your car. When you get to the counter, 
That's when the fun starts because that's when the company will start to take back, try to start to take back what the good deal that you got when you did it through Expedia. And the first thing that they do think about is they won't take cash. They won't take it to the card. You need to have the credit card. The second thing is that they're going to ask you what insur about insurance. Okay, if you have automobile insurance with your own name, or if you have a credit card that might have some stuff associated with that, you might want to look long and hard at whether you can uh, deny that coverage. Okay, then the other thing is whether you want to buy their gas or whether you want to fill it up at the end. It's wonderful now because you can look online and see, or on the phone, and see where the station is close to the airport so you can get gasoline. Interesting thing that I found out this summer was the other thing that you have to worry about is electronic tolls. Because electronic tolls, especially in, uh, I was in Dallas, and they're, they're prevalent in Florida and in California, but in Dallas, uh, no toll booth. And so I'm in the rental car, I go through the rental car, they, give, they grab the number and they send the bill for the toll to the rental car company. And the rental car company, of course, like a good citizen, corporate citizen, pays the toll. The toll. But in our wonderful uh, competitive culture, they are allowed to add any fees they want. So I paid $15 in tolls and $113 in fees for two days. And and that was after talking to it to get it down from $213. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting thing there. It's a, it's a way. And then when you get back to the airport, get your car, let it go, and uh, get all your stuff out of it, and uh, you're in great shape. I had a boss once who was very bad, lived in a visionary world, was very bad when he had to leave a rental car. He left a rental car in San Francisco one day. He was late. He left a car in San Francisco at the terminal, drove up, drove up and left it there and gave the key to the to the to the guy on the street. And uh, they charged him the they found it eventually at the impound lot, but they charged him the car and the, everything else on his American Express. So beware of all that, and you'll have a great time renting a car, Mr. President. <laughs>